Just take the biggest, fattest dream you can think of and then do what Elvis Presley did. Follow that dream. He's found a whole new, wonderful way of life, and so will you if you just relax and follow that dream. See Elvis Presley in Follow That Dream. Color and Panavision. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Elvis Presley. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Anne Margaret. Viva Las Vegas. It's Elvis Presley and Anne Margaret together for the first time in MGM's big new musical, Viva Las Vegas. Shake the little tambourine. Shake, ring, a jing, jing, a ling. Shake, shake, one little dancing queen. Hi, this is Gene Wheat of Chivalry, and that was the one and only Elvis Presley singing one of the nine great new songs in his brand new MGM motion picture, Harem Scarum, the slapstickinest spoof ever to hit the big Panavision and Metrocolor screen. By the way, this is one you can bring the whole family to. That's a story about a, a boy who uh, just got out of the Army, and uh, he's in love with this girl, this Hawaiian girl, and uh, his parents don't uh, don't go for him because they're high class and... Uh, but uh, it, 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 gets, it gets all involved, and, there's, and then there's about 11 songs in it. We're doing a Hawaiian wedding song, Hawaiian sunset, and uh, Blue Hawaii. This is Alan Fortas. I was associated with Elvis Presley for 11 years. There was Sonny West, who was on the payroll. He took care of all the cars and travel arrangements. There was Marty Lacker who kept Elvis's payroll books while we were on the road for expense money. Joe Esposito, who did the same thing. It was Billy Smith who took care of Elvis's wardrobe. Gene Smith, Billy's cousin, and a cousin of Elvis was also on the payroll from time to time as helping with wardrobe. Then there was Red West, who took care of Elvis's music, did stunts and movies for him, and also was a stand-in for many a year in California. There was Lamar Fike at the time, who was Elvis's transportation officer. George Klein had worked for him at one time, traveling. Richard Davis also took care of a lot of odds and ends. Ray Sitton, who lives in Los Angeles now, took care of a lot of different obligations also. There's quite a few of them. I think that those fellows have been very loyal to Elvis, and I think that Elvis, in turn, is very loyal to them. Those fellows in his entourage, w whatever level they're on intellectually, are very sincere guys, as far as Elvis is concerned. And I think they have an understanding. Those are the guys that he runs the street with. He understands that he supports them, and they understand that they work for him. And I think that's the understanding. Elvis was bugged by a song or a particular note or a particular change in the music, you know. You would just feel that he was a little bugged about it or perturbed. Maybe he wanted it louder, softer, whatever. And so the minute that would happen, that was sort of the cue for all the guys to start their fun and game. Somebody would go over and give Elvis a karate chop in the back of the neck, you know. He would turn around and throw his, you know, throw a karate kick up at one of the guys. And before you know it, they were having karate parties. He loves the motorcycle. Did you know that he's the only movie star that's got it in his contract that he can ride his motorcycle? I might be wrong, but I think I'm right about that. I think he told him it's say, well, you know, I like to make movies, you know, and his uh, great desire is to be a great actor. And I think that's pretty wild when a cat says, well, man, if I can't ride my motorcycle, you can keep the movies. It's kind of hard, uh, no matter what position you're in, when you go to a landlord and tell him you want to rent a house, especially in Bel Air, California. They want to know who it's for and, uh, when you tell them seven or eight single men, they kind of shine on it. They were modern houses. Uh, one of them, uh, the one we lived in most of the time, of course, uh, was a house in Perge Way. Well, you couldn't bring a guy up there. The only guys that were there were these, what do they call them, the Memphis Mafia. I never saw any other guys up there. There were usually, I'd say, 15 or 20, 25 people, because Elvis and his gang, I don't know what you call them, the girls used to try to be friends with this chimpanzee and he was really something I mean, he'd come up and tear your clothes and that you know they didn't like it you know but they had they pretended to because it was elvis's pet mgm presents elvis presley who wants to 
Starring in It Happened at the World's Fair. Hurry, hurry, see the attraction of the century, the Seattle World's Fair, and Elvis Presley in action and romance at the Space Needle on the monorail in the air. Elvis at the fair. I would say the wildest crowd we ever had to face was probably at the World's Fair in Seattle when he did the movie It Happened at the World's Fair. They would give us a call to be on the set at 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we're supposed to be on the set at 9. Well, we had to go through the World's Fair to get the location. It would take us an hour to go half a block. And that's with like 25 policemen and all of Elvis's personal staff around him. It would take us that long. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis Presley. Singing the title song of his latest United Artists release, Frankie and Johnny, an Edward Small production coming to your favorite theater soon. And co-starring Donna Douglas, Harry Morgan, Sue Ann Langdon, Nancy Kovac, with many, many others. Yes, it's Elvis that is loving us, fighting us, singing his best. Elvis sings 11 Red Hot Blues, all available on RCA Victor Records. Entire production in glorious Technicolor. For fun-packed entertainment, see Elvis in Frankie and Johnny. Don't you dare miss it. <laughs> 